Okay, thank you. First, I'd like to thank all of the uh, cooperating agencies. This has been a, a big event with a lot of uh, people involved, a lot of mutual aid uh, within the state of California. First, uh, the city of Ridgecrest was a lead on this incident. Uh, we were in unified command with uh, Kern County Fire. Um, OES, uh, Director Gil Arducci, CAL FIRE, Director Tom Porter, uh, Major General David Baldwin with the California National Guard, CHP Deputy Commissioner Scott Silsby, uh, U.S. Congressman Kevin McCarthy's office, Shannon Grove's office, uh, Mick Gleason's office, uh, Public Health, Environmental Works, Human Services, and Southern California Edison Red Cross. And so as you can see, there's a lot of people involved with this. At 10.30 this morning, we had an earthquake in Ridgecrest. And uh, with that, we started a large number of resources. And it was for uh, not only the earthquake, but we were uh, assured that there would be aftershocks. And we've had over 100 aftershocks after the main earthquake. And we have resources from all over the state of California. We have resources from Rialto, Chino Valley, San Manuel, Redlands, Colton, all formed through the Office of Emergency Services with a strike team leader. Use our equipment from Los Angeles County, and we appreciate our partners, and it's important to recognize them. We've had minor to moderate injuries in Ridgecrest, a few, um, but, but with the magnitude, we were very grateful that there was such a uh, a limited amount of injuries and damage. There's minor and moderate damages to uh, various structures out in Ridgecrest. We have two facilities open. Uh, one is at the fairgrounds in Kern McGee Center for uh, cooling centers. We know with the power being out, that is an important component that, that we need to look at. And it's important for the community to know that you're safe. We have a lot of resources. As you can see behind me, um, the, the magnitude of people that would be involved in an incident like this or bigger, that we're prepared, prepared to act. Um, let's see, our uh, radio communications is open, 911 system. We had over 163 calls out in the Ridgecrest area, emergencies. That's a large number, and so uh, there was an extreme backlog, but we were able to catch up to that because of master mutual aid. One structure fire, the airport wasn't affected, and also uh, the Army Corps has inspected the dam, and the dam is secure, the Lake Isabella Dam, and uh, we feel comfortable with that situation. And with that, um, I'll hand it over to Director Gil Arducci with OES, and then I'll follow up with questions after this. Thanks, Chief. All right, good afternoon. Uh, thanks, Chief Witt and uh, Mark Gil Arducci, Director of uh, Governor Newsom's Office of Emergency Services. Uh, first of all, uh, let me just uh, convey our thoughts and concerns to all those who have been impacted by today's earthquake. You know, certainly not a small earthquake and and you know there was enough damage and people you know on a day where we were together with our families uh celebrating uh the nation's holiday uh having to deal with this this earthquake um we are of course as the chief mentioned happy to see that the number of injuries was relatively minimal and and really no report of fatalities uh, definitely want to highlight the exceptional response by both the city of Ridgecrest and uh, Ridgecrest and uh, Kern County Fire and Sheriff and all the other emergency services uh, rapidly responding to the event. And um, obviously, uh, the chief mentioned, but the the state agencies are standing behind me. The leaders of those organizations uh, uh, immediately uh, engaged with the county shortly after the quake occurred. Um, providing uh, assets from all of the various agencies that are represented here, the Cal Guard, the CHP, uh, Cal Fire, and then of course through uh, OES, uh, a, a mutual aid uh, from a number of Southern California departments, uh, including urban search and rescue resources and fire strike teams. Um, also shortly within hours really of the, the uh, earthquake, Governor Newsom did proclaim a state of emergency. Uh, that was very important because it ensured that all resources that could be made available were being made available and all state agencies were focused on supporting uh, the county and the city. Uh, it also opened up key programs uh, that will be necessary for recovery over the long term. Uh, you know, clearly this was a very large quake uh, in its size and could have been 
uh, much more uh, injuries and, and damage, but uh, we do feel lucky. And, and now we're gonna focus on completing the damage assessment, working with both the city and the county on uh, really refining uh, both uh, damage assessment to critical infrastructure, um, as well as um, working uh, to support the county as they work with the, the community members uh, doing an assessment. And it's important to do a good assessment after an earthquake, because sometimes earthquake damage is hidden uh, and it takes um, uh, a little bit to make sure that we're, we're determining uh, um, the quantity and, and the magnitude of the damage. Uh, keep in mind, it's important that people understand that there are going to be aftershocks. In fact, uh, there have been a number of them, but there could be uh, aftershocks and there could be even a quake as large as the, uh, the initial quake in the next 24 hours. So it's important uh, that people um, uh, secure any non-structural items in their home uh, that could fall over, that haven't fallen over in the initial quake. Uh, be safe, have a family plan. Uh, and make sure that you're you're thinking through that. And I know that they're working hard to uh, reestablish the power uh, in the area and, and in cases where uh, there are any other lifelines that are necessary working through that. Um, we're also uh, making sure that, um, uh, that you know, as, as individuals to listen to local authorities in the event that they issue any new or additional alert and warnings um, throughout the night and into tomorrow uh, so that you are as informed and empowered to respond uh, accordingly. We'll continue to stay very much engaged through my office, the Office of Emergency Services. Uh, Governor Newsom has been briefed each, um, each hour. We've been making sure that he is up to speed. In fact, we just uh, got off the phone uh, uh, briefing uh, his office. And uh, 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 throughout the remainder of this particular incident, we'll be working closely uh, with the uh, local authorities to uh, make sure that all the resources are, are met. And so uh, with that, um, I'll be turning it back over to Chief Witt and we're happy to answer any questions. Chief? Okay, I'll open it up for questions at this time um, from anybody, from myself or anybody behind me. So in terms of the source of where it took place, or USGS gonna be out there? Are they concerned that any surrounding areas where there may be other faults, like the San Andreas fault maybe, um, a concern for the community? Well, um, as uh, Director Gilarducci uh, stated, we're concerned about aftershocks because we know that in the next 24 hours there could be more, and they are monitoring the situation currently. Any others? In terms of the app, I heard that there was also an issue with the app, the Shake Alert app, and so if Ready Current did send out an alert today, who would have got it and did it go there? Brandon, you want to talk about that? So we did not put out a ready current on this. This was the city of Ridgecrest and um, they were handling this scenario. So at that point, it was just a notification door to door as they were going and assessing. So, so if you were to send out a ready current, it'd be everyone here? Everybody who is signed up within the area that's affected, that's where ready current will reach out to. Yep. Is there any possibility that an aftershock would be a larger magnitude than the initial earthquake? So absolutely. We, we've actually been on conference calls with, uh, with the USGS and the seismic uh, um, with the state. And that's exactly part of the warnings. I mean, it's an earthquake, it's unpredictable, and we do expect to have more aftershocks. And yes, that could happen. Uh, Northridge is a good example. Three years later, they did have another major earthquake. And so it's definitely something that's a concern. So I've been out to Ridgecrest, probably several other report reporters have as well. Um, given the fact that Kern County has a lot more structures, a lot more, a, a bigger sized community, if we were to experience that type of magnitude here, what would the devastation look like? Would it be as light? Uh, I wouldn't even want to take a guess at that, but I think the most important part is that people are prepared. As, as um, the director had said, we people need to be prepared, expect to have no power for 72 hours and have a plan in place and that's the best way to mitigate it. We'll get out notifications that we can, but as you see, this earthquake took place in Ridgecrest and it's, it's extremely draining to get a lot of resources there quickly to assess it and get um, action taken place and so that's where we're bringing in more to be able to handle that, but um, it does take some time. So tomorrow, are you guys gonna be out there? Is USG, who's gonna be out there tomorrow? Uh, we'll be continuing to monitor the situation. I'll let uh, Chief Witt answer that. 
Uh, tomorrow we're going to have the same number of resources out tomorrow. You know, during this next 24 hours, OES will uh, let us use the OES equipment um, throughout the day on the incident and uh, throughout the night. And so we're going to have the same number of people ready and prepared to protect not only Ridgecrest, but the county of Kern. Any other questions? Power? You mentioned a little bit about the issue of power. So Power should be on tomorrow. Uh, by tomorrow, we should have most of the power on. I'll, I'll have to defer to Southern California Edison. But from what I'm told, uh, from a person that I talked to with Southern California Edison, that uh, we should have a lot of the power on by tomorrow. And the latest, uh, sorry. sorry the, the, how of um, exactly how many people were without power experience and outage? Yeah, so Southern California was, uh, Edison was estimating around 7,000. Um, that was earlier at the impact. And now we're down to roughly around 1,300 without power. Any gas issues? There are some gas issues, but they're being addressed. There's nothing significant right now being reported. How many total structure fires? Can you touch on that one more time? So we want, we had one active structure fire, but numerous calls for structures, and those could be from gas leaks and multiple other things, but the only one active structure fire. Any other questions? Okay, thank you very much. And uh, we will uh, be sending out more information as it comes in. And if you have any questions, contact our local PIO. Displaced, is there anyone displaced? I know that we just talked about injuries, but people who are displaced? So we have no reports of any major displacement of, of residents, and we do have Red Cross who will be supporting that um, and establishing different centers as needed. Are there going to be extra patrols besides just you guys, like anyone else that's going to be coming that you guys haven't mentioned? Uh, no, pretty much everybody's within that mutual aid system coming in. Um, have most, most have actually made it here, and uh, we're just going to continue working on the scenario that we have ahead of us. The two cooling centers, as I mentioned earlier. Okay. Um, yeah.